Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're diving into the enchanting world of Iceland, a place where glaciers, waterfalls, and volcanoes set the stage for our dance moves. My sister has made this breathtaking country her home for over a year now, and will be showing us over 40 places to see in Iceland. Let's jump right in and see what Iceland has to offer. We use Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, as our home base for the first two days. The first place we went to on the day we landed was the Sky Lagoon. You can reserve your spot for the Sky Lagoon online. Once you check in, you get a wristband for the change rooms. You can also sync your credit card to the wristband and use it for the coolest spa bar ever. The entrance to the lagoon is an experience in itself. As you walk out of the small labyrinth, the view opens up to the oceanside infinity pool. The fee depends on the day and time you go, but the base cost is on average 65 US dollars. I would highly recommend the $20 upgrade to access the seven step ritual that happens behind this door. The Sky Lagoon is only 15 minutes from downtown Reykjavik and is a must visit place in Iceland. On the next day, while waiting for the rest of the group to arrive, we decided to check out seven different spots along the Golden Circle, which is a scenic 300 km loop near Reykjavik. I do however think they should rename the Golden Circle to the Golden Shark. The first stop along the Golden Circle was Thingvillir, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is known for its geological significance as it lies between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. We then took a quick stop to get some ice cream. The cool thing about this ice cream place is eating next to the cows. So we're here now. Our third stop to the Golden Circle at the Gazers. So cool. This is my first time uh, ever seeing one. Whoa. Whoa. That's pretty epic. We then headed to Gullfoss, also known as the Golden Falls. This was the first large waterfall I saw in Iceland and I was in complete awe. So we're going down this trail all the way to get a bit closer to the falls. I got pretty drenched, but that's a good sign because that means we got pretty close to the waterfall. We had lunch at a mushroom restaurant along the route. For around 22 US dollars, you got unlimited mushroom soup and a variety of bread, spreads, and mushrooms. Our next stop was Carid Crater, which was formed around 3,000 years ago. The contrast between the red slopes and the blue pristine lake makes this crater a popular attraction. My favorite part of the day was the Reka de Lure hike. The trail follows a marked path that takes you through green hills, rocky areas, and bubbling streams. You'll also notice steam rising from the ground and surrounding hills. Heading to Reka de Lure. We have a spa in the mountains. The Reka de Lure hike takes around 1.5 hours and leads to a beautiful hot springs river. It started raining, but we're determined. Just gonna keep going. It's pretty late, like, I think it's 8 p.m. So this is my friend, Marco. Our luggage got lost in our connecting flight, so he has to use his umbrella. With, with flower design no, and his crocs. And my crocs. <laughs> Just made it and I'm so excited. It's past 10 o'clock, walking back in the rain, but feeling really good. Iceland is uh, something else. The rest of the group arrived the next day, so we stuffed the cars and started our big road trip to our first campsite in Vik. We had an absolutely jam-packed day, with seven stops to make. With no surprise, four of those were waterfalls. Then, the other three were a glacier, a plane wreck, and the black sand beach. So the whole reason we're here in Iceland is to visit my sister! She lives here with her boyfriend, her Icelandic boyfriend. Yeah, she's taking us on the whole ring road. She's created the whole itinerary. So you're going to see her a lot. Uh, she'll be introducing a lot of the locations. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. 
Now that we were all together, the first order of business was surprising my sister for her recent engagement. Skoga Falls is a beautiful and very popular waterfall with opportunity to walk up and see the falls from the top. Alright, so now we're heading to Kvernum Foss. It's a stop after Skoga Foss and most people don't know about it. It's actually not very touristy so there aren't a lot of other tourists here as you can see. But it was recommended to me by my friend who's a tour guide. So kind of like a secret spot on the route of the south coast. So let's see where it's at. All right, so now we're at Solimayoka Glacier. Um, this is a very popular glacier for ice climbing and glacier hiking because it's near the city. It's only about less than three hours away and there's lots of really nice crevices for climbing. So this is a plane that crashed on this very spot. Lots of people ask me if people died in this crash. And the answer is no, luckily. Now at the last stop, yeah, I feel like we did everything today, like so many different types of waterfalls. We're now at the Black Sand Beach. Even celebrated my sister's uh, engagement, so I had a, like a little fun engagement party. It's so nice to have the whole group together. So now we're at Reynes Fiara Beach. We have an awesome sunset behind us. You have to be really careful on this beach because the waves are called killer waves. And if you turn your back on them, sometimes really big ones can come up and scoop you into the ocean. The distinct hexagonal basalt columns at Black Sand Beach were created by the rapid cooling and contracting of lava flows. We were lucky to see some puffins nestled on the cliff. These little seabirds stay faithful to their partner when they settle down. They tend to reunite annually at the same nesting site. morning. Uh, last night we stayed here at Vic Camping. It's a really nice small picturesque town. As you can see it's so beautiful. Uh, the campsite is awesome. There's showers, toilets, Wi-Fi, uh, like an indoor eating area. Um, like a place to wash your dishes. So yeah, highly recommend staying here at Vic. Our next campsite was one hour and 40 minutes away. We had four stops to make that day, an arch, a cave, a canyon, and a waterfall. When we got to the first site, I was really impressed with how these arches were carved by the relentless action of the ocean waves. It was also cool to be able to see a glacier and the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. We've stopped at a, a gas station to get the very famous 
Icelandic hot dogs. I've heard so much about this. Let's go try it out. Okay, so Icelandic hot dogs are very popular because they're quite cheap and you can get them at almost any gas station. And this is a type of Icelandic mustard and I personally don't like mustard, but this is really good. And this is a type of remoulade, so it's like a mayo-based sauce. And then this is just ketchup. So you usually get the hot dog with a raw onion and crispy onion and I added potato salad on top of it and then you add all the sauces. Can you guess what this cave looks like? This canyon is epic! It's gorgeous! Pretty funny watching us all walk together with our matching hats. We concluded our day with a hike to Svartifoss, a waterfall surrounded by basalt columns. Next to this waterfall was our campsite, Skaftafell Campground, where we rested our heads and replenished our energy before embarking on another day of adventure. Welcome to day three of the Ring Road. Here we are at Skapta Falls Campground. Really big area and the coolest thing is it's right next to the hiking trails to the waterfalls and to the glacier. The visitor center is pretty good. There's a lot of information of the surrounding area. The next stretch of the Ring Road before our campsite in Hofen involved driving beside Vatna Yukal Glacier, the largest glacier mass in Europe. Before we went to see two popular glacial lagoons, we first went on a hike that definitely lands on my top three things to do in Iceland. I'm going on a hike today. Uh, five kilometers and 300 meters of elevation gain. So that's where we started, hiked along the ridge, and now we're here. Over there is the top of the hike. It gets a little bit steeper towards the end of this hike, but I know it's gonna be worth it. Made it to the summit and now we're out. To see if the view is a glacier, a waterfall, a volcano crater, a Yoda cave. Let's go. Holy cow! Cheers! I think my favorite site in Iceland keeps changing. I think before this trip, I've seen like one block of uh, an iceberg and now, you know, like, look at how close they are. Thank you. 
approaching the next stop now and it's right across the road from the previous one. Um, it looks like there are iceberg blocks that have floated onto the shore. We walked around and admired the striking contrast between the dark shore and the glistening ice. This next day was more on the quieter side. We had three main stops to make before getting to the campsite in Sadis Fjorder. Our three stops were a hike, a waterfall, where we ate our dinner, and finally the spa. We took a detour from the ring road and drove through one of the dirt roads in Iceland to get a taste of the highlands. After our hike, we stopped by one of these bouncy trampolines you can find in playgrounds across the country. We paired our couscous and tuna dinner with the soothing ambiance of the waterfall. I'm so excited for the spa! So this one's called Vok Bass. Spa, 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 spa. The unique thing about Vok Bass is the opportunity to jump into the cold lake right beside the hot pools. We woke up the next morning from our campsite in Sadis Fjorder where there were induction stoves and an indoor eating area. This town was really cute and had a fun rainbow road leading to a blue church. We were now about to drive up to northern Iceland. Our campsite for that evening was next to Lake Mivatin. As I'm researching this, I can now see that Mivatin translates to midges. This will be relevant to know in a few minutes, but for now, let's see the stops we made on the way to Mivatin. This must be waterfall number 10, please. Yes, waterfall, waterfall number, number 12. Maybe 20. So it's funny because if this waterfall was at the end of a hike in Calgary, like back home, it would have been a super epic waterfall, super epic sight. But when you're here in Iceland, it's like, meh. We took a pit stop at a diner where, as usual, the boys discussed serious things and the girls danced. We're here visiting a canyon called Stuudlagu. Stuudlagu. So originally we were trying to do a 10 kilometer hike, but now that we are here, um, we realize we're on the wrong side of the canyon. So behind us is the 10 kilometer hike and we're on the side with just two viewpoints. We don't have enough time to cross and um, do the hike on the other side, but I was able to fly my drone to see what it looked like, so. Stutlagil has the largest collection of basalt columns in Iceland. The river changes color within the seasons, and we unfortunately just missed the beautiful blue-green color it has between March and July. We continued our journey to our next stop, Detifoss, which was a short walk from the parking lot. This is Detifoss, the second most powerful waterfall in Europe. Deti in Icelandic means to fall, and foss means waterfall. So Detifoss translates to the waterfall of the falls. We ended the day in the best possible manner. This hot springs is called Mivati Nature Baths and is a great alternative to the Blue Lagoon. We're at this campsite today. Um, it's quite beautiful because it's right by the lake, but we're getting attacked by, by flies or mosquitoes or some sort of bug. Lake Mivatin was actually very close to our next stop, Akureyri. Despite the short distance, we still had a busy day as there was still so much to see in the Mivatin area. This terrain had a striking resemblance to the Martian landscape.
Okay, that's enough fooling around. Let's learn something about this place. This is a geothermal area in the north of Iceland. And there's a lot of geothermal activity here, like bubbling water, uh, which is also where we get our water for hot springs. It also produces a lot of sulfur, which is what causes like the reddish orange color. And it also smells like rotten eggs. Okay, if you ever find yourself here in Nivatin uh, hot spring, I would highly recommend to eat at the cafeteria here right at the spa. They have really good affordable soup, um, great bread, wraps. So yeah, that's a little hack if you're coming here to this spa. So we're trying to research why there's so many black flies all around us. And I found an article on it. June 19, 2014. An apocalyptic swarm of black flies at Lake Mivatin. Be sure to bring your insect repellent and a protective head net because the Icelandic black flies, known as midges, have overrun Lake Mivatin. Okay, we found the one place without bugs. Although the harmless creatures only live for seven days, the amazing quantity found on the lake creates an apocalyptic swarm that is so dense it blocks out the picturesque scenery of the mountains. Oh. We're doomed! <laughs> Then, we found a solution. Oh, this is great! Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Our friend Alex ran a section of the crater while we practiced her dance moves. At least we gave him a nice welcoming upon his return. Krafla Volcano has erupted approximately 29 times since the country was first settled. This is Gotafoss. It's one of my favorite waterfalls because it's like six or seven waterfalls coming together in one. And there was an Icelandic chief in the year 1000 who decided that Iceland should just adopt Christianity. So he took all his pagan statues and threw them away. And then it is known to have produced this waterfall, which is now called Godafoss. That night, we set up camp in Akureyri, which is the second largest urban area in the country. We explored the small but charming downtown and also tried a few of the local restaurants. This marked the final stretch of our road trip. We had a long four and a half hour drive back to Reykjavik. We had no plans to stop along the way, so we just made the most of the little time we had left in Akureyri. So the end has come and here we are at the last spa in Iceland. This lagoon is called the Forest Lagoon and I've heard many good things about it. The Forest Lagoon was my second favorite spa after the Sky Lagoon. However, at only 50 US dollars, it's definitely the better bang for your buck. The unique thing about this location is how it's surrounded by trees, something you don't often see in Iceland to begin with. Similar to the other spas in Iceland, there was a bar that you could swim up to. Despite feelings of melancholy as our Icelandic adventure was coming to a close, we celebrated one last time for my friend's birthday in the embrace of a hot springs waterfall. <laughs>